All right, all right, all right. Well, well, well. Good morning, good morning, and good morning. I lost my remote, but there it is. So, indeed, happy Friday. This is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Okay, I think I hit the wrong button and changed the song I was gonna play, so hopefully the one that YouTube just chose is good. But nonetheless, good morning, Brother Daniel, Rob Pixley, Ruth, Janine on fire and fired up, my faithful high school longtime friend and digital scripture poster, Brother Antoine, Brother Antoine, I got your message. I won't listen to your sermons, but I can only do that on Sundays because I work six days, 12 hours a day um, for the season. I won't curse myself with that or word curse myself with that as a permanent, but for the season. Okay. So today, 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 uh, I want to share with you the second half for what we were talking about yesterday. And yesterday we were in Luke 10, but this whole week, Good morning, Amanda. Um, this whole week has been talking about the Great Commission, the call to make disciples or teach disciples. Um, good morning, Brother Patrick. So there is a great call upon us and uh, some worshiped, some doubted. I guess we can go there. You know, back in, in Matthew 28, it said, you know, when they saw him, they worshiped him. But some doubt it. So they just saw Jesus resurrected from the dead. They're standing there. Some are going, this is him. Praise him. Praise him. Some are going, I don't really know about that. Uh, do people come back from the dead? Brother Troy, good morning. And I don't blame him. I think some of us would doubt too. I'd probably be the one who was doubting. Like, man, how could he be back from the dead? That don't make sense. That probably would be me. But nonetheless, I doubted when I came to the Lord here. Um, but... God is big enough to handle our doubts because he is God. So when Jesus, Yeshua, came and walked this earth, he had many that believed and some doubted. So this was a great call upon the believers. Good morning, Karen. Good morning, Liliana. So this was a great call for the believers, and it really separated and strengthened some faith, and some walked away from the faith. There's no difference today. There's things that God's done in some people's lives where they're like, I'm a believer, I worship, he's God, he's real. And there's some that are like, oh, I don't know. I don't know if he's real. I don't know if I believe in all that stuff. And you have the right to choose so. That's why it's called free will. Now, even though it's called free will, there is a price attached to the decisions that we make. So you can make them skeptically, but make them wisely. So use wisdom. Ultimately, in Proverbs 8, if you read Proverbs 8, actually most of Proverbs is about wisdom. But I really feel that Proverbs 8 is laying out what wisdom is and how wisdom relates to Yeshua. And some of that, when you read that, you'll grasp that. But nonetheless, I'm on fire this morning, so I'm all over the place because the Spirit is just pouring. So with that said, today we'll be reading Luke 10, 16 through 24. It's a lot of scripture, so I better shush and start reading. Then he said to the disciples, anyone who accepts your message is also accepting me. And anyone who rejects you is rejecting me. And anyone who rejects me is rejecting God who sent me. When the 72 disciples returned, they joyfully reported to him, Lord, even the demons obey us when we use your name. Yes, he told them, I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Look, I have given you authority over all power of the enemy, and you can walk among snakes and scorpions and crush them. Nothing will injure you. But don't rejoice because evil spirits obey you. Rejoice because your names are registered in heaven. At that same time, Jesus was filled with the joy of the Holy Spirit and said, Oh, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, thank you for hiding these things 
from those who think themselves wise and clever and revealing them to those who are childlike. Yes, Father, it pleased you to do it this way. My Father has entrusted everything to me. No one truly knows the Son except the Father, and no one truly knows the Father except the Son and to those whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Then when they were alone, he turned to the disciples and said, Blessed are the eyes that see what you have seen. I tell you, many prophets and kings long to see what you see, but they didn't see it. And they long to hear what you hear, but they didn't hear it. So there is power and what he is sharing with them as he is walking with them and talking with them while he is preaching, teaching, and healing, he is giving them a message saying, for thousands of years, they prophesied that the coming of the Mashiach, the anointed one, the Messiah was coming. People have prayed for this. The prophets had prophesied it was happening, but they didn't know how it was going to happen. We get the whole word. We get to look back over the history of it. But they didn't know. They were just speaking what they were inspired to speak by God. Now, with that said, that goes right back to the first point. The first point, anyone who accepts your message is also accepting me. And anyone who rejects you is rejecting me. And anyone who rejects me is rejecting God who sent me. The importance, the importance of speaking the true word of God and not our own opinions is if we are standing there and we are sharing because of the relationship that we have with our Heavenly Father through the Son, that we are sharing the message that He gave. And that message always leads back to Him. So if anyone shares anything that leads to anything other than back to Him, I'd be cautious of that message. Now, there is a lot of different Gospels and prosperity Gospels and churches that talk about the churches solely and a lot of focus on the church, the building, and giving to parishes and all that. All that stuff's great, but that's called religion. So religion can get confusing because through religion, people could be trying to work their way, like climbing a ladder to a point of righteousness to their Holy Father. That's not really how that works. When Jesus went to the cross, the veil was torn in two. So when the veil was torn in two, you no longer need a high priest. But you can call out between your daddy, Abba, Father, and speak to him directly because that was given to you as a birthright. Oh, I wish I had time on this. I have to save that for Sunday. So the second thing is when he says, they're saying, Lord, even the demons obey us when he, we use your name. And he told them, I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Look, I have given author you authority over all the power of the enemy. Stop. Don't miss this. So, when Jesus was resurrected, when he took the keys of death, Hades, when he overcame sin and death, when he overcame those things, he said, now I don't 100% know if this hasn't happened yet, and this happens in Revelation 12, which is yet to come, but he gets to speak because he's the one who was and isn't yet to come, so he's kind of outside of time. So I don't know if this physically has happened yet where Satan fell like lightning, because Satan has to ask permission to touch a hair on one of God's anointed. Therefore, in my personal interpretation of the scripture, that would say that he's still standing before the throne of God until the great accuser is cast down. Now, it would almost seem like verbally Jesus is saying he was cast down at that moment. But I don't think that really happened. Yet, that's just an opinion. But I believe that when Jesus overcame sin and death, he's still outside of time. The victory's already won. Jehovah Nisi, he is the victory. He is the banner. He's already given us the authority because the battle's over. It's finished. We just haven't gotten there in a the time frame here. And that all sounds nuts. I know it. But this is why we dig in the world word like a Berean. Word by word, line by line, precept by precept. We dig in the word of God because that is the truth that we are supposed to be speaking. So, I have given you all authority over the enemy. That means when we say we're under satanic attack and there's all these things, is it true? Yes, I believe that we are battling a spiritual realm. But at the same time, when Jesus walked the earth, humbled himself as a man, when he was resurrected and spoke to the disciples, he gave them the authority that passed on through his word, the logos, 
the word of God. So when we get the word passed to us and we speak the truth, the word of God, that gives us the authority over the enemy. Therefore, he is the serpent that is under our feet. Please do me a favor. For any of you that have been raised in Pentecostal churches, stop grabbing snakes. I don't really think that's what it means. I don't think you should just stick your hand in cobras and all that stuff and say, look, I'm safe. That's not exactly it. Remember, what he's speaking to, he's speaking to people that he sent out with the gospel. So if you are not being sent out with the gospel, if you're hanging around with your friends, that's probably not a good time to stick your hand in a bunch of poisonous snakes. However, if you go to Paul, and when he is trapped on the island, he sticks his hand in a fire and a viper jumps out and bites him. And they said, oh my gosh, this man must be a total sinner because he made it through the shipwreck. But look, a viper is gonna kill him. The viper didn't do a single thing. Because at that time, he was sent out by the Spirit of the living God to go and preach the gospel. And who knows that the Spirit of the living God, when you are sent out by him, nothing, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And that is what he means. So if you're being sent out, it's not stopping. Another example would be John, the one whom Jesus loved. Not John the Baptist, because he actually was beheaded, but John the one whom Jesus loved, the one that's laying on Jesus' breast on that picture where we all see, where they're all sitting at the table of faces the same way. I don't really know if that table is like that or not, but what I do know is John was boiled in oil. All the disciples were martyred. John was boiled in oil and he lived. So they couldn't kill him. They had to send him to the island of Patmos where he received the revelation of Jesus Christ. Not multiple, it's not revelations. It's one revelation of Jesus Christ. Jesus' mission, <laughs> woo, if you catch this, Jesus' mission for John wasn't done yet, so nothing could stop him here on earth because Jesus was still planning on giving him the revelation of who he was so nothing could kill him. <laughs> woo, come on. So when he says, all authority, I have given you all authority and power over the enemy, when you are sent out as disciples, sharing the gospel and laying your hands on the sick, preaching, teaching, and healing. I'm not saying put yourself in harm's way. We don't want to tempt God, but he's not going to let much happen because he has a mission and his mission is greater than all things here on earth and nothing will injure you. This is the word that we stand on. This is the promise that I stand on. Now, at this time, Jesus was filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and he says, Lord, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, thank you for hiding these things from those who think themselves wise and clever. The Sadducees, the Pharisees, the Sanhedrin, the religious officials of the time, they all missed it. But the simple men, the fishermen, the workers, the people that out there that had a heart that was desiring to know who God was through a relationship, he poured it out to them. So the, it was foolishness. The cross to this day is foolishness to those who are perishing. It's foolishness to people of this world. But to those that are receiving who he is, that is who the son choose to reveal to him. So when we hear the word and we reject it, God goes, okay, that's no problem. You can reject it if you want. But for those that hear it and go, I'm hungry, I want more. Those who thirst and hunger for righteousness, they shall be filled. So, man, I wish this was a Sunday because I want to dig in this one heavy. The essential workers. Yes, Mr. Brother Antoine, Pastor Antoine. So, Blessed are the eyes that see what you've seen. I tell you, many prophets and kings long to see what you see, but they didn't see it, and they long to hear what you hear, but they didn't hear it. I can tell you right now, if you are watching these messages daily, guess what? Spoiler alert. You are one that already wins in the end because the word of God would turn you off if you were opposed to him. Even if you're one of those people that sneak on every once in a while, you don't say anything because you don't want anyone to really know that you're paying attention because you really like the word of God, but you don't want to tell people that you like the word of God. Yes, you. That means he's not done. So if you still have some doubts and you're working through those doubts, that's cool. But if you're listening to the word and it doesn't repulse you, that means he is calling on you. He is calling on your heart. He stands at the door and he knocks. And anyone who hears his voice and listens, they, he will come and abode with them. You will abide with them. You'll live with them in a relationship. Forget the religion. In a relationship, he'll bond with you. You'll become one flesh with our heavenly father. You'll be united for all eternity. Even the ones that are out there lurking going, I don't want to click on it because they'll see my little bubble pop up. 
I'm just gonna watch from the outskirts so it cuts off in two minutes and I'll pop it back on. I'll watch it later. Yes, you. He has chosen you because you're hearing these words and it's not my words, it's his words. And it's attractive to you. If his word is attractive to you, it's because he is calling on your soul. Your soul is eternal. This is temporal. This is all gonna go. Jesus said heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. So, before I turn this into a Sunday and brothers gotta go to work, Father God, we just praise you. We just glorify you, Lord. We just praise you, Lord, for who you are. Lord, we just praise you. We praise you. You put the enemy under our feet and no weapon formed against us shall prosper. So right now, Lord, right now, we just bind and cast out all spirits of chaos, confusion, doubt, and fear. For greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. So, Lord, we just pray that you release your anointing over your children right now. Jehovah Nisi, you are the victory. You are the banner. You are the Mashiach. You are the anointed one. And when you claim victory, you passed it on to us. You gave us the same authority. You say greater things you will do if I go and be with the Father. You can ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it so the Son may bring glory to the Father. So, Lord, I just pray that you open our eyes, remove the scales from our eyes. Let us understand who we are as your sons and your daughters, as your warriors, as your soldiers. Lord, there is no story in the Bible where the giant wins. He is always slain by the one who appeared to be lesser. But greater is he who is in us that makes us greater. So we are more than conquerors. So pour out your spirit. You said, if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways and seek my face, then I will hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. Lord, you forgive our sins as far as from the east is to the west. Change us from the inside. We are new creations. We are because of what you have done on the cross, Lord Jesus. So when you said to Telestai, you didn't say I'm getting started. You said it is finished. So let us receive the perfect, complete, finished work of what you've done, Lord Jesus. Pour out over your children right now. We release your anointing. We release your wisdom. We release your, your, your guidance. For you are the good shepherd. And we are sending out your children as sheep among the wolves. But as sheep, there's a good shepherd behind us that could defeat any predator. Woo! So we thank you, Lord. We thank you that we trample on the cobras, we trample on the scorpions. For Lord, we are just rejoicing, not because we're over the enemy, but because we get to stand before you for all eternity. So we praise you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Oh, Lord, in Jesus' name we praise you. So, the two things that we know for certain. Good morning, Martha. Happy Friday. The two things we know for certain, and that is, well, three things. Jesus loves you, Clarence loves you, you can't do anything about either. Spend five minutes today talking to your Heavenly Father because if you are looking for him, he's already chosen you. So don't miss the call, all right? Love you guys, God bless.